Hello everyone, my name is Otabi Santana and today let's talk about documentation. You know, documentation is crucial for any software development because it increases the quality of the software. It reduces the number of meetings, especially because the reason that we have the software is on the software itself. It's more scalable, they have several meetings. Right now, documentation is important as tests. Sometimes we don't know how to start and how uh, to put documentation in a new product or the product that it exists. However, it does not provide any documentation. Today, I will explain three good documentation types to put on any regular source repository. The first one is the readme file. I will create one using askdoc instead of markdown. Why? Because askdoc is powerful and if you use uh, GitHub, is able to visualize as well as we do with markdown, okay? I will create my first file here where it will be my readme a doc, okay? And then I will create this file. If you are a IntelliJ user, that is the tools able, such as we do with Markdown. I will start with the structure of any source code repository. The first one, of course, is my product name. So my product name, as you can see. Then. I will do my introduction and this introduction should have why. Why uh, do we have this source repository? And please try to do it in just one paragraph. Explain short and briefly. Then move to the goals. So I explain why. So what should you do? So first bullet, improve source code, then help to documentation and so on. Then please explain how to use and how to install, install it. So how to use getting started exploring my API. Of course, as Markdown, you are able to put some highlight and codes as you wish, okay? If you are, for example, a Java developer, you may want to put some reference to the Maven repository here to make people able to use and include in a class path. So I use here, I install here, then I will move to my API overview. API overview. And something like to know more, to take more reference and so on. The main goal of the readme is not to fill up the function of the full documentation, but it should have a highlight of any feature that might pay my attention to go deep on it, okay? Now I have my overview of my readme file. And yes, everything that we know about Markdown, you are able to use here. So I want to include uh, in my getting started some code. So I able to come here, then a string, text equals Otavio and then I able to close here and that is it I have Java code here as usual with markdown I do if you wish you are able to use uh, the power of the markdown itself as you can see it has the out complete so 
I open close source code and then I will put the the source code here and that is it okay I guess I forget one and it to be the same another point if you have a huge uh, contents on the readme please use and explore the index on the table of contacts. Uh, the beauty of Markdown is because it is powerful to use and explore. For example, if I decide to go to Markdown, I need to put the index manually here, one by one. And every time that I need to include a new section, I need to modify manually as well. Or if with Markdown, I don't need to use that. So I able to do the talk table of context and then find as auto as you can see and here you go i have my table of context automatically thanks by markdown and that is it again the main goal of the readme file is to introduce you about the source repository it should have an introduction with a single paragraph the goals on bullets they get started where it explain how to use the highlight of the features and how to install. For example, if it is a Maven repository source codes, the reference to put that on your class path, the API overview, and more reference about the source code repository if you wish. The main goal here is okay. I went into this repository. Right now, I know exactly what it does and what it does not do, an overview and how to use and how to install it. The next one is change log. I know you are able to monitor all the chains on the GitHub by history. However, it's not easy, it's not trivial to monitor anything. To make it easier to us, there is a second file where we're able to use, that is the change log. So I'll come here, I will use asdoc instead of markdown, as I said, it's more powerful on my perspective than why a lot of open source are starting to use. Uh, come here, change log, a doc I will create my title uh, change log and then I will define my table of context as you may know and then I will put the versions there are several rules to use uh, for example I able to put here the unreleased versions and with the features with categories. So I have the on release, then the what I add on this version. I add this thing, what I change. Uh, what I remove, sometimes it's happen, right? And so on. What I fixed. Right now, I know what this version has. And of course, you're able to put new version. So on release, this one here is released. So release. Release. Of course, when I released, so uh, this time here, and then I will do the same thing. So I come here, I will call paste just to explain to you the idea. And right now, of course, the latest version should stay in the top because usually you want to see the hot, hot 
change happen so you usually go to uh, the top it's much easier uh, in this way here as you can see I have my release my version and of course my table of contacts so if I want to go directly to the previous version I able to come here I know when it was released uh, what I add what I change what I removed and what I fixed don't worry, I will put the links with more information about change logs. However, as you can see, the main goal here is to be easier to, to track the change by version on your source code. Okay, let's go to the third type of documentation. This one here, bring feelings about some, some people, some engineers, uh, this one is about the code documentation, okay? It's not just one file, a single file, but any documentation, any class file or any class that makes sense to put documentation, please put documentation on it. Uh, as I'm using Java, I will use Javadoc, where I will explain what's going on. Of course, it doesn't make sense to create, for example, a person here and like string name and then put some C documentation like I create a getter and then a document like this is a getter and then I will create a constructor and then put this is a constructor. Of course, it does not make sense to use documentation as well, this way as well. Please pay attention. Uh, on documentation, you're able to put the business rules around, uh, around scope and why you are writing this entity here. So for example, this person represents a user in my system, a user that might be a seller or a buyer, something like that. Okay. Right now, I know why I'm doing this code. Something has become complex. Please use and explore the power of Javadoc. In Javadoc, you have several features for example you're able to create links something like that so a seller uh, i able to define okay a seller that might be a person or something like that my whole point here is please pay attention on the source code documentation if you go to the biggest in the most successful open source products like Java, the JVM, Spring, uh, Jakarta E specifications, micro profile specifications, micro strings, uh, the class has documentations. Uh, Linux kernel has documentation in the source code as well. The Go language. The Go language has documentation into the source code. Okay, so source code documentation is important as readme and change log. That is it for today. Hopefully, you understand uh, how to use and explore those documentations. Again, readme file where I put why. This repository does exist. And on this file, I will put the introduction with the overview. Please try to use one paragraph if possible. The goals in single bullets, if you wish. The getting started where I will put some overview about the documentation, oh, sorry, about the API, how to use, how to install, and so on the API overview, to know more, some external reference that you might want to use, the change log to track 
uh, the change by version, as you can see here. So on release, the category of each version, like what I added, what I changed, what I moved, what I fixed, and so on. And as you can see, I have the release and the date when it was released, and so on. And finally, the source code documentation, where the main goal is not to put uh, a de description about the language, uh, language syntax, like it's a getter, it's a constructor, and so on, but put why this class does exist. Try to link the source code with the domain, right? Explain why did you go to this way, and so on. That is everything for today. Remember, this one here focuses more in the source code repository, in the single repository. Of course, if you want to know more about documentation on architecture, there are more documentations like C4 model, Tech Radar, architecture decision records, and so on. Thank you, everybody. See you soon. Bye-bye.